proclaim of your goodness, of your faithfulness upon our lives this morning. And we say, Lord, that this far you have brought us. This far, Jehovah God, you have held our hands, oh God. Thank you for equipping us, oh God. Thank you for leading us into, in, in so many different ways, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength even when we were weary, Jehovah God, that we were feeling like we cannot finish this class, Lord, but this far you have brought us. Father, ours is to say thank you. Ours is to lift your name on high. Ours, Lord Jesus, is to bless you, oh God, because you have been a faithful God. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that has guided each one of us this far. Thank you for our teachers, oh God. Thank you for our lecturers. Thank you, Lord, for the committee that has been organizing this thing, oh God. Father, we bless you for each one of them. May they find favor before you, oh God, this morning. May they, Lord Jesus, find your goodness and your mercies, Lord Jesus, in their lives, in their endeavors, oh God. Father, we bless you, we lift you up. This far, Lord Jesus, you have brought us. We bless you. We bless you, oh God. See how far you've brought me, Lord, I've come to worship you. You've brought me, Lord, Lord, I've come to worship. You say, see how far, see how far you've brought me, Lord, Lord. praise give him honor this morning and because he has brought us this far we are going to say yes to his will yes to his calling because today we are being commissioned to go out and do that which we have been equipped to do amen and then we say this far this far this far you've been my god you say this far, this far, this far, this far, you've been my God, you say. This far, this far, this far, this far, you've been my God, and say, Ebenezer, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, you've been my God, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, you've been my God. Ebenezer, 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 you've been my God. And uh, this far, this far, this far, you've been my God. Help me say this far. This far, this far, you mean my, say like you mean it. This far, yes, this far, this far, you've been my God. Ebenezer, say Ebenezer, Ebenezer, you've been my God. Ebenezer, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, 
You've been my God. And you say, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll obey. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes, I say yes. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust. When the Spirit, with my whole heart, and my answer, Lord, and now we say, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when the Spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll obey, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes, say again. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, so in my whole heart I'll obey, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Come on, give him praise in the house this morning. Give him praise, give him praise. We want to praise the Lord because he has done it again. He has done it for us. If it were not for him, our being here could not have happened. Therefore, we have a reason to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hakuna mungu kama wewe Hakuna ha, kama wewe hakuna Hakuna ha, kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna ha, kama wewe hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna ha, kama wewe hakuna Hakuna mweza kama wewe Hakuna ah kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna ah kama wewe Ni wewe Mungu natosha Hakuna ah kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna anga kama wewe hakuna ni wewe Mungu mwezesha hakuna liye kama wewe hakuna hakuna ha kama wewe we baba we baba we baba pokea sifa ye we baba Ewe baba, we baba, we baba pokea sifa Ewe baba, ewe baba, ewe baba pokea sifa Ewe baba, metueza shatwa sema pokea sifa Ewe baba, ewe baba, ewe baba pokea sifa Ewe baba, ewe baba, ewe baba Pokea sifa, pokea sifa, pokea sifa, pokea sifa, pokea sifa. 
E baba, e baba, e baba, poke asifa. E baba, e baba, poke asifa. E baba, e baba, poke asifa. Your name, how 
Thank you and we worship you, our Father. Thank you for giving us this moment to praise and worship your name. Thank you, Lord, that you've brought us this far, Jehovah God. We started the class, Jehovah Lord, a year ago. And indeed, Jehovah Father, we've seen your faithfulness taking us all through Jehovah God for the last 12 months, Jehovah Father. As we sat at your feet, Jehovah God, to listen and be taught, O oh God. And indeed, Jehovah Father, this far we can say that you are our Ebenezer. We thank you and we bless your name, O Jehovah Father. We thank you, King in glory. We worship and honor you, Jehovah God. We say thank you, Lord, because Jehovah Lord, we know that the knowledge that you've given us, Jehovah Father, you shall help us to put it into good use in the name of Jesus. We say thank you, King in glory. We say thank you, Jehovah Father. We worship and honor you, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, uh, praise and worship team. Before you sit down, can you just say hi to your neighbor and ask, ask your neighbor, how, how do you feel? Huh? For the graduates, especially now that you are graduating, and for those people who have brought the graduates to the graduation party, how do you feel that you have a friend who is graduating? How do you feel that your parent or your sister or your brother is graduating? Amen and amen and amen. We can get our seats. We are celebrating the doing of the Lord, isn't it? You know, you know what I've realized is that celebration, first of all, starts from the heart. It starts from the mind. You deliberately decide that you are going to celebrate for what the Lord has done. And sometimes it's good to look for even very small things. You decide that I'm going to celebrate about this one. Unajua unafanya kitu kidogo, unajiabia. After this one, I'm going to celebrate. And every day, I think you should be looking for something that can make you celebrate. Ata kama nikobe a chai, unasema, hey, I've done it. I'm going to take a cup of tea. You celebrate because of what the Lord has done. And now that we have reached this far, we have the reason the more to celebrate. 12 months of commitment is not easy. But we've had a reason to look forward to the second Saturday of the month so that we can come to this place. I hope you have a plan for the coming 12 months on what you'll be doing on the second Saturday of the month. <laughs> so that you don't lapse. You know you can lapse. You've been eating and eating and feeding and then you realize that uh, 12, now this one has come to an end. So what do you do next? You should have a plan. So that and make sure that the plan that you have, if you are committing those that day to the, the school of ministry, as we plan so that you can have a continuity, purpose to make sure that uh, you are not going to break that, that rhythm. It helps. We have learned a lot of stuff, and we pray that the Lord shall help us to continue to grow more and more. Amen? It feels so good to know that uh, you are coming. You know, for some of us, we have, we have graduated so many times, but not in the church. <coughs> eh? graduation uh, kwa church. So the, we were hoping that we shall be having the gowns, and uh, for, we tried as a committee and uh, as a management. We tried our best. <coughs> Thank you. It's good to say these things in open. So we did try our best. We did, our best did not, come to, did not come to what we expected, but regardless, our hearts are rejoicing. It's not the gown that is graduating. It is us. So please bear with us. I know some of us are um, a bit disappointed because we are looking at this as a big thing it is still big, <laughs> right? So I want to let you know, if you are looking for the gown and you not get it, and you felt like this thing is not what I expected, please know that God is still here with us. And even whether, whether I put them or not, actually the glory might be better. Because our focus now is not on the gowns. 
Amen. I'm not going to labor that, but I wanted to make sure that I, I say that so that then uh, you appreciate that uh, it's not that we did not do what we are supposed to do. We did, but uh, for one reason or the other, we couldn't reach to that point. So, announcement for the graduates, we are meeting, sitting in the middle, is it the middle, or on the, my right, and uh, you have been organized in alphabetical order, so make sure that you sit on your seat so that uh, then you can be able, <clears throat> when you be called for the certificate, you, it will be easy for us to get the, to have the order as you come and pick your certificate and as you sit down. All right, so we are progressing on well. We thank God for the blessings of the rain. And um, we know that we are going to have food. Uh, when the rains come, we look forward to having food. And by the way, we were charged that uh, we are going to have, uh, we do something about environmental stewardship, right? We have two plants two trees, which you are going to plant at the end. We shall uh, be led by one by the pastor, the other one by the principal. And um, our compound is small, so we couldn't plant too many. And there are other people who are also planting. And, uh, but this is, an, um, as you graduate, you make sure that you have a plant this year. I don't know whether it is this class whether, where I was asking whether in somebody has ever planted a tree. Have you ever planted a tree? Lift a hand, your hand if you have ever planted a tree. There are others who have never planted one, but they have used it in terms of papers and whatever else. And uh, So, can I give you a challenge for environmental stewardship? Make sure that every year you plant at least one tree. Is that a good one? If you are as old as I am, you can imagine how many trees. Of course, there are those years when I could not plant. From the age that I came that I was able to do things, if I was planting a tree and my brothers and sisters were doing the same, my father's farm would be a, a forest. But some of us are just cutting trees and they have never planted. So please make sure that you take the charge. So we shall have that. And then um, we shall also have the graduates. Make sure that uh, you prepare yourself for the song. It is there on, uh, on the, um, our WhatsApp group. So uh, we shall be guided on how to do it. But for now, uh, we proceed with the, with the program, and I want to request uh, our principal, our brother George, to come and uh, guide us on what next. Thank you. Welcome, brother George. Nasifiwe, praise the Lord. Are you happy? Are you sure? Very exciting. It's very, very exciting. Eh? No wonder Solomon alisema kwamba, the end of the thing is better than the, the beginning. Yeah. So we really thank God for, for his goodness and uh, how far he has taken us. You know, uh, in, the, in the olden days, I do think, and I remember that uh, it was like uh, when you finish class eight, eh? uh, you are so excited, thinking that uh, that is the end. Na, at that time, tuna, unachoma hata bitabu. Nasema kwamba masomo ime, <laughs> masomo imeisha. But then you come to realize that this is still the beginning. Eh? There's so much more to do. So we are very excited to have this first cohort graduating at such a time as this. And we thank God so much. You have made it. You know many, how many have started? You have made it. And all glory to God because of how far he has taken the class of 2024. We, say we started in 2023, yes, but we are graduating in 2024. All glory to God. So today, they will be not taking notes, so you don't need to look at the screens and all that. So we are here, and uh, there's no problem. There is nobody who will be asked, can you remember the first lesson? Nobody will be asked, so don't worry. Eh? There's nothing to worry about. Everything is very fine. Uh, this today is a day of celebration. Tuna celebrate, Sindio. And uh, we thank God, and we are so grateful. Uh, we are grateful to God, who has made us reach this far. This is a great day for the class of 2024, you have gone through the 12 months. It's not easy to go through the 12 months. 
When we started the classes, we were 374. 374. And the people who are graduating today are 131. They are the ones who have been able to be resilient enough to be able to finish. Clap for yourself. <laughs> and you have met the prerequisite that was required. The school has discipline and rules. And we say it, anybody who is going to graduate must attend at least 80% of the classes. And you attended 80% and above. Congratulate yourselves. <laughs> it is not because you had nothing to do on the second Saturdays of the month. It is not so. It is the commitment that you had as an individual that I want to go through with this. And indeed, we are here today to thank God and to celebrate for his goodness. So as I said, 374, and we are graduating 131. Uh, you can imagine that. And I think this cuts across um, uh, the divide, as we have seen even in other spheres of life, we see there are good starters, many, many good starters of a project. Many start well. Even when a race, people start well. But they are very, very poor finishers. And it's just like a marathon race. Most of the time, the people who have gone through the marathons, they tell you, do not start very fast. Yeah? It requires resilience as you go along. So CITAM program on equipping the workers is an important tenet of effective leadership. There is no reason why you would go and serve if you have not been equipped. I always say, sometimes we say, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So you got to be prepared to be able to serve the people of God. There are people who are very excited, there are people who have the passion to do it, but for us to avoid the situations like the ones we had in Shakahola, where there is passion without substance and doctrine, people ended up where they ended up. And when you are equipped, you can serve effectively and efficiently as the servant of God. And what we have said in Sita Murungai and we have agreed is that for you to be able to serve in the ministries, whether it is in the committees, whether as leaders, it will start from here. It will start from being equipped and have gone through the class of the School of Ministry and Leadership Development. It is going to be a prerequisite for you to serve. So thank you very much as, uh, as you are very passionate and, uh, and everything and uh, you, you, you are spirit filled, but you must pass through this class of ministries and leadership development. That is important. Our service to God is accomplished by serving others. The key thing in our service to God is not directly to God himself. We have communion with God, yes. We have relationship with God, our Father, yes. But serving God is serving the person you see. You serve others. And that is why we are ready to go out there as uh, the graduates to be able to serve others as we serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible reminds us that passion for service must be augmented by sound doctrine that can only be learned through such settings that we had. The 12 months that we had, that is a reminder to us that we need to augment the passion, the strength, and the eloquence. You know, you can be very eloquent and you can be a good speaker and orator, but without the substance, you cannot serve God well. Bible talks to us about a gentleman called Apollos. And Paul is also referring to Apollos. You know, Apollos in the Bible, you guys now have gone through the school of uh, ministry and leadership development. You know so much. But we know about Apollos. Apollo was very eloquent. He was very bold and a good servant of God. And he was passionate and enthusiastic to serve God. We know about that. But even as he was doing this, he had an issue 
there was a doctrinal issue. He knew about the baptism of John the Baptist, but he had not heard about the one for Christ. So there are two couple here called Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila calls him, Apollo, you are very eloquent, you are very passionate, you are serving the Lord very well, you are a great guy, and all that, but let's come and, come and let's show you something. What you have taught in the pulpit is not correct. So we want to put you to the true north. That in as much as you say this and this, you need to augment it so that you can be able to be accomplished in where you are serving. That's a great example to us. This guy was a great man. In fact, Paul is referring to him that he planted Apollo watered. Okay? And who planted and who watered, by the way? So this class. Who planted? Paul is saying who planted and who watered. <laughs> okay, All right? So uh, there is that correction that is there. So, today is the beginning. Today is uh, the start of no excuses to serve God. You can no longer sit in the pews. You have gotten too much. Now you have to go out there and serve God. There is no excuse. You've been here for 12 months, upon a tenor, that you are sitting in the pews, we have our children there in the Sunday school, we have the teens that need uh, mentorship, and you are sitting here in the pews just to feel good. It's no longer the case. In fact, you have been stirred. You have been disturbed from your position, from your comfort zone to go out there. And the worst part of it, you are at risk. You know the risk that you are at? The Bible says, to whom much is given. Yeah, much is expected from you now on. Now you put yourself in harm's way. But when you now sit here and do nothing, you are at risk. Because God has given you so much for the 12 months. The church has facilitated. The number of people that we brought here, they were top notch. These are people who have taught you here, are people who teaches people in the professor, uh, PhD levels and, and, and bachelor's level. You have been given the best of the best. So when you get out of here, you have to go and plug in and serve God. You are at risk. So, <clears throat> we've gone through all that, and we want to thank God and crown it with a graduation. And um, as uh, uh, my brother uh, Douglas has mentioned, we had planned good things, but God planned better for us. We thought that we are going to have gowns so that it is very symbolic, but we thank God that um, this is the way we are going to do it. And there's nothing wrong with it. We are still okay. We are still graduating. And we are still very happy that we've been able to complete this particular class. Aren't you happy? Let's thank God for that. <laughs> so lastly, I want to say this, that uh, uh, behind the scenes, there are people who have really worked hard over the 12 months. Remember that um, we are doing it, we were doing it for the first time in Sita Mongata Rungai. The first time that we were doing, uh, you know, this uh, school of leadership, school of ministry and leadership development, we did it for the first time. And there's a group here that did a wonderful job. And actually at the end of, uh, towards the end, we'll recognize them. But I want to thank the secretariat so much that uh, they've been able to do this job They've been week, month by month, to get even the facilitators to come, to organize you, to make sure that we have the lunches, to make sure that the program is flowing, to make sure that uh, the curricula is moving the way we had envisioned. They spent sleepless nights to make it happen. We might not know, but this is a group that met at night, met during the day, met physically, also met uh, uh, online to make things happen, and I want to appreciate. Without them, we could have not made it so far. Let's clap for this group, <laughs> and we'll recognize them. We also want to thank the leadership of the church so much, and this is going to be at the vote of thanks, uh, that we have been enabled, and we have the space. There are many, many places that you don't have the space uh, that you can be able to go through this session because there are so many things that are competing and resources are constrained. And for us, 
the leadership of the church has made it possible for us to be here every week, to give us this space, to have our lunches, to have all these people coming, and sometimes to give them token of appreciation. We thank God for that. So um, I want you all to be happy because you have done well. You have done well. You have worked. You need to appreciate yourself. This is work. You know, when, when Jesus healed the ten, only one came. And he says, where is the rest? I compare that with starting at 374, the people who were very committed at the beginning, and you guys have made it. Clap for yourself once again. So the program for today, we have a program for today that we have set. We, is not going to be, we are saying it's light. It's a light program today. It is not a program that is going to stress us. There's no learning, there's no taking notes and everything. What we have here is that, uh, uh, of course, we will also call you here to give us a special song, isn't it? So there's something you want to thank God about, isn't it? For those who have a problem in the chord of the voice, you can still make a joyful noise and the Lord will accept it. The Lord will still accept it. But we have people here who is going to, they are going to guide us even as we appreciate that. And then thereafter, we will have uh, uh, Professor Mwangi coming, and he's just going to give us the charge, and, and uh, then we'll be ready to do the other things. Um, <clears throat> then tomorrow, we want to come back uh, the same way we came. Between the services, we want to unveil this team that have gone through uh, this school, and um, we want the congregation to recognize the work that you have done. So tomorrow between the services, dress the same way. Uh, for us men, I think it is easy. <laughs> for us men, it is easy. We can just dress the same way. <laughs> for us men. But for the ladies, okay. Yeah, just dress the best you can. Eh? Yeah, so that we can be unveiled here. Sindio, sikazi imefanyika vizuri. Na tunataka congregation wajue. Yeah, so we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate with them. And we also want to encourage them that it is possible. If you have been able to make it yeah, for the 12 months, they can also be able to make it. So let's prepare for that as well. Uh, the Lord is going to bless us. So I want to call back uh, my brother uh, Douglas Miano to guide us in the next, uh, the next uh, aspects that we are going to cover. And we thank God for everything. I've been your principal and I will continue to be. Uh, and I will still follow you. You know, you have graduated. We have not given you the certificate, we have not graduated anyway. But we'll follow that to confirm that the work or whatever you had learned, you applied. It's not just that, we will follow up so that we can work together. We are going to work together to ensure that everybody is plugged in and everybody is doing something for the glory and honor of the Lord. Welcome back, my brother. Thank you. Let's give a clap for our... Let's give a better clap for our principal. He is a real principal, not only here, even behind the scenes. He is a principal. For those who are in schools where there are principals, you know how the principals can be. So, okay. Now, we, had men we have mentioned that uh, we are some we are supposed to have a program of how to continue from here. And I think the pastor mentioned this, you remember? And uh, he went ahead actually and uh, prepared for, asked what it takes for us to move to the next level. And uh, this is, uh, he talked to Park University and requested that uh, what it, those, those leadership training courses that he had mentioned about, and uh, he got the information actually and shared with, uh, with the committee and uh, there is a certificate and a diploma course that uh, we won't actually to launch in, this, in, this, in, in here. We shall give you the directions on how that will be done. The certificate application fee is about 300, and the tuition fee is about 950 for the certificate course. And uh, this entry for this one is for those people who have attained D plus and above. So if you have a D plus, you can be able to take over the, the course. It's very interesting and very, very good. And um, we shall give you more details as uh, when we plan and share more information on how you can be able to join the program. 
So there is also a diploma course. The diploma course, the application fee is again 300, and the tuition fee is 1,850. This, the entry requirement is C plus and above, or a D plus and a certificate from accredited, accredited, accredited institution. So more things are coming for us so that we can continue to be equipped. So and um, look, let's look forward to this. We shall communicate and uh, let you know how we are going to run the program. It's fairly easy if you are able to commit yourself to come here for every uh, second Saturday of the month, you should be, this one is even more easier and made more friendly for you to, to do it. And as we continue to, um, to grow in our spiritual and also physical beings. The next thing that you are going to have is that uh, the, um, the graduates are going to have a hymn. I don't know if we come in front or we do it wherever we are. We do it from, from where you are seated. We, you start, or you come here. Okay, uh, they will be guided by those people who know how, uh, how, how best the songs should be done. We shall still do it because we are happy. But uh, and, um, the principle that was not very kind for some of us, but we appreciate. So be ready. It is in the group, and then we will call our um, our sisters to come and guide us. So then, um, what was that? Yes. So we are doing well. And uh, so we can prepare for the song. And I, I want to invite our sister Miriam. And uh, is it Eunice? You can guide us on how we are going to go about it. Thank you. Thank you. When I saw Sifiwe, I want to welcome Doris here, Sister Doris and Sister Maureen. Kindly join me here. And once again, Karibuni Sana. And congratulations, you have made it. Come on, appreciate yourselves. Now, I hear is like you want to sing from where you are? Oh, no. From where you are or from where I am? Wakuja hapa. Aya. Now, that, that's, that's my problem. Do we have enough space here? Okay, assuming it's tomorrow, Sunday service, shall we be able to come up, all of us? <laughs> we can try now? Okay, fine, let's try. So we can walk according to the way we are seated, and then we mount up. Uh, you, 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 as we can just remain down here. We mount up and sing. Let's start. Let's start doing that. And as we do that, we can sing a chorus. Cerebure Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Shangilia Yesu Shangilia Yesu Shangilia Yesu Maku Maku Ametena Maku Maku Wana Wama Buana Ametena Ametena Maku Maku Ametena Maku Shangilia, <laughs> 
Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I'm at your number cool. Hey, my cool. Hey, I'm at your number cool. Hey, my cool. What now, I'm a bona. What my jessie. I'm at your number cool. Hey, my cool. I'm at your number cool. Hey, my cool. I'm at your number cool. Hey, hey. Let's celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, dance. Dance for the Lord. Hey, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, hey, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Oh, I'm at your number cool. Oh, my cool. I'm at your number cool. Hey, my cool. What now, I'm a bona. I'm at God be the glory.
for me. Thank you. And you are looking so nice from this end. We thank God. So, even the voices say that those are people who have been trained. <laughs> yes. And thank you, Sister Miriam, and the praise and worship team for reading us in that uh, hymn. We praise the Lord and let the world hear his voice for great things he has. And he has done specifically to us as individuals. We say that today is our day of celebration. And um, You know, last time when we went for, for baptism, and my wife decided that she's the one who is going to baptize me. <coughs> and that was her dream. <coughs> Incidentally, when I even went to be baptized those days, she's still the one who took me for baptism. She didn't know that uh, it would be like this. <coughs> but we thank God for all things. So it's good to have a vision. Huh? And you never know how God fulfills visions, right? In his own special way, he makes things happen. So if, if, if your, 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 your spouse is not baptized yet, wewe omba, utapata nafasi ya kuwa ni wewe utamu? Utambatiza, yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we want to come to the part that is enjoying. The part of where we are getting our certificates. And uh, this is not going to be... Unajua kuna ule ulikuwa inaitwa ushaguzi wa makerere? Muna simama, nyote, muna ambiwa, muna enda, ama... So this one is going to be individual. Urisoma ukiwa peke yako, sindio? So you'll be called by your name. You come here, you get your certificate, and you get your photo. And then after that, we shall have a photo session at the end. And we are going to have a, photo, a group photo for all of us together. Right? So we want to change the program a little bit as uh, we wait for a keynote speaker to come so that then we can have the part of uh, where we are getting the, the, the certificates and we say these celebrations. How, how do we go about it when we are... We have a time for um, when everybody comes, whoever comes, it's, he or she is approud, isn't it? Let's approud one another. Let's everybody feel like you have, you have done something. You have, yeah. Let our hearts be glad because the Lord has been together with us. So I want to invite our, our, uh, our principal and uh, the secretariat. You be also be near so that then you can get guidance on what you need to do as we get the certificates. So be ready and uh, as you are called, you can come and uh, you receive your certificate. Amen. So I do want to confirm that it was actually not a joyful noise. There were melodies in there. <laughs> wow, congratulations. <laughs> yeah? ah, we do not despite the days of small beginnings. Eh? These guys can turn out to be a choir. So what we are going to do is that um, we are going to issue the certificates uh, so that when the keynote speaker comes, he'll give us a charge, isn't it? He'll just talk and give us a charge and then we can proceed so that we can redeem time. Okay, I want to mention to you well, the certificates that we are giving are very, very nice certificates, but uh, because uh, one of the uh, um, signatories, senior pastor, uh, Reverend uh, Michael Amboy is supposed to sign, and also the ch pastor in charge of CD, they are supposed to sign. So you will receive the certificate and later on you will give them back to me so that they can be signed. <laughs> that is in order, isn't it? Ama, you want an assigned certificate? <laughs> yeah. So that's how we are going to do it, yeah? Okay, so we'll start. It is in alphabetical order, and uh, we'll issue the certificate. So I want to invite the secretary to come to help me so that we can be able to do this very fast, and of course, uh, take the necessary pictures that would be required. Okay, secretary, it can help us. Okay, I'll start. I'll start uh, uh, the first person. Let's congratulate them as they come. Yes. 
for the photo, so you'll give them there. Okay, so the first ten, uh, whether you'll give the first ten, then you'll give, then you'll give. On <coughs> index number 001, <laughs> Agnes Mwangi Gashunga. And show them how it looks. It looks very nice, eh? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Pick my coffee. Asante. The next one, Agnes Wamboi Wangoi. Wow. Congratulations. I'm talking to my coffee. Receive, uh, receive well so that the picture comes in. Thank you. Wonderful. The next one, Alice Watuku. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> who, who should eat it? Douglas. <laughs> Okay, thank you. We go to the next one. Angeline Ouko. Angeline Ouko. Tumpige makofi jameni. The next one is Anne Nelima Makani. Next one. Anne Wairimu Kimani. Where is that? Okay. Anne is not here. Okay, we can keep it aside. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, Asenath Memusi. <coughs> you? Next one, Augustine Muema. Congratulations. Congratulations. Next, Ayub Ngigi Mabuya. <laughs> and next one, Beatrice K. Gashoko. Gashoki. Sorry. Beatrice. That's Beatrice. Beatrice? Okay. Uh, the next one, Benedicta Senewa Lanke. Sante Sana. This is a very memorable photo. Eh? I'm almost chukwa nzuri kabisa. Benedicta, ako happy? Sante. Next one. Benedicta. Okay. The next one, Betty Karanja. <laughs> so we gave my coffee. The uh, lady has done well. The next one, Bonface Murage. Okay. Congratulations, eh? In order. Usipompigia makofi yata we utapigia makofi. <laughs> Bonface Mwangi. Bonface Mwangi. Mwangangi. Mwangangi. Okay. Uh, that was a trial for you. Eh? <laughs> Caroline Njema. The next one, Caroline Nelima. The next one, Catherine Chebogel. My coffee. Next one, Catherine Matonda. Hey, Catherine's are many. Eh? My coffee. <laughs> yeah. Next one, Catherine Jerry Kirago. Go up. 
The next one, Charles Kibui Nganga. Akofi. The next one, Christine Makoha. Christine Makoha. Next one, Clement Morara. Akofi <laughs> Kwake. Next one, Damaris Njuguna. Ah, Makofi. Thank you. Next one, Daniel Mado. Daktari, come. Come, come Daktari. To issue, also you need to issue, eh? <laughs> the next one is yours. You need to issue. <laughs> Davis on Sakia. <laughs> Davis on Sakia. My coffee. The next one, Dora Oroko. My coffee. <laughs> I have not called uh, you. <laughs> okay. The next one, okay. Emoja too? Okay. The next one, Dorika Eshiwani. Are you good? Cool? Okay. Doris Makendi Kimathi. Yeah. <laughs> Dorothy Mamuyak. Mamuyak. Nelian. I pronounce, okay. Mamunyak, okay. Okay. I need the next person to issue. It's going to issue. Miriam, come and issue. <coughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. Yeah, come and issue. The next one is Douglas Miano. <laughs> the next one is Elizabeth Wambuyu Wahinya. My coffee. Daktari, you can't get rid of Immaculate Lucky Okello. My coffee, man. Jamil. Next one, Iso Opio Ochieng. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Esther Gishuku Muni. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. The next one is also Esther M. Kinyua. The next one is uh, Richard. Come, <laughs> Esther McKenna. <laughs> the next one, is Yuki Kamau. Yeah. The next one is Eunice Mutemi. Congratulations. The next one is Eunice Ochieng. <laughs> next one is Eva Wanjugu Gashanga. Okay. The next one is Evelyn Wutiko. Evelyn. Okay, you can keep that. Thank you. Next one is Evelyn Mutange. Yeah, guys who are popular. Next one is Faith Shidi Montet. <laughs> My coffee. Next one is Faith Wanjiku Kemo.
The next one is Felista Wamboy. Hey, you need to special you see chini. Next one, Francis Jeroge. Mbugwa. Wonderful. Next one online, Frederick Obunga. The next one is Geoffrey Mosotti on Tiri. I think there's something wrong. Eh? The next one is Gladys Agano. The next one is Grace Quena. Grace Quena. The next graduate, Grace Wanjiru Kuria. Next one coming, Hannah Wanjiku. Next one coming, Henry Mpapale. Mpa Pale. <laughs> oh. Next one coming, Jacqueline Mahamat Mahamara. <laughs> the next one is Henry Kiediavai. <laughs> the next one is Jackson Muhia Muraya. Can I have Esther also to come? Esther, come and issue. Dr. Rikwansa, okay, fine. Jacqueline Gatti. <laughs> Jacqueline Simaloi. <laughs> James Kerongo. The next one is James Mwendo. Mwenda. Next graduate, Jane Muthoni Njeru. <laughs> okay. The next one is Jane. Kiarie. <laughs> Next one is Jen Frida. Jen Frida Marondo. She's not here. The next one is Jen Munene. Makofi. <laughs> The next one is Jane Wairimu Ndugi. The next graduate is Jane Wambugu. <laughs> Happy, Elder. Elder. Wonderful. The next one is Jennifer Ruguru Duo. My coffee for Jennifer. Good. Well done. Well done. Well done. The next one is Jennifer Muigai. My coffee. <laughs> next one is Jeremiah Matonda Orina. My coffee, Kwake. The next one is Jessica. Nyangasi Shishangi. 
Makofi kwake. Okay, the next one is Joan Makena. Makofi kwake. The next one is Joan Ajelo. <laughs> Makofi. Hai pigeni watu wa Makofi. Amen. Next one is John Oscar Asuma. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The next one is John Wery. <laughs> Stella, Stella, where are you? You are being sought here. Okay. All right. The next one is Joseph Murunga. My coffee, Joseph. The next graduate, Joseph N. Mwangi. The next graduate, Josephine Maruru. Are we correct? My coffee, kwa Josephine. The next one is Mom, Josephine Joki Nyambani. Ako happy? Ayuko, Sindio. The next one is Joyce Njiraini. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I had to give them a bit of time. The next one is Joyce Asuke. Asuke, okay. The next one is Judy Wanja. Makofi kwa Judy. The next graduate is Juliet Wanjiku. Victor Kadeni, the next one. Uh, order as Victor Kadeni? No. Gitange, not here. So. Lea Nanyu, my coffee. <laughs> next graduate, Leonard Njema. <laughs> okay. Uh, chair leader, you hapo and uh, to side kwa makofi. Uh, the next uh, graduate is uh, Lillian Chemtigen. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. The next one is Lea Kitui. Lona. Lona Kitui. I correct. Lona Kitui. <laughs> the next one is Lucas Owino. Next graduate is Lucy Oyoya. The next graduate is Lucy Wanjiku Njoroge. The next graduate is Marianne Jerry.
The next graduates, okay, let me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, family. Thank you. The next graduate is Martha Christabel Makoha. <laughs> And next graduate is Mary Kyongo. Next one is uh, Mary Wairimu Njenga. The next graduate is Maureen Mwangi Makofi. The next graduate following is Maureen Obunga. She's not here. Uh, next one is Maureen Omini. Is she here? My coffee for Maureen. The next graduate is Maureen Winnie Lusaka. My coffee. Yeah. The next graduate is Masi Kubai. Coffee for Masi. The next graduate is Millie Mbui. <laughs> okay. The next graduate is Miriam Wawira. The next graduate is Mudaki Clara Lumadi. Is she here? Next graduate is Paul Kinyanjui. Makofi Jameni. Oh, okay. The next graduate is Paris Njeri Ngede. Paris Njeri Ngede. A coffee, Kwake? Wow. The next graduate is Peter Nderitu Karoki. <laughs> Peter Nderitu Karoki. Not in. The next graduate is Peter Nyaoga Oroko. The <laughs> next graduate is the next graduate is Fanny's Kerubo. Next graduate is Philip Inziano Amutemwa. My coffee for Philip. My coffee. Where? And next graduate is to be issued by. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, Doctor. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. We just, yeah. The next graduate is uh, Richard Njoroge Muiruri. Yeah. Who's going to issue the certificate? <laughs> yeah, we can issue. The next, the next graduate is Richard Wangombe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one is Rosalind K. Feather Aligula. Rosalind? My coffee for Rosalind. Thank you. The next graduate is uh, Ruth Malinda. Ruth? 
Teacher, please. Okay. The next graduate is Ruth Nasimiu. Is she there? No. Next graduate, Salome Kinudia. <laughs> The next graduate is Salome Mukai Musioka. My coffee. The next graduate is Samuel Nyambane. Next graduate is Samuel Bishage. Marcelo. My coffee. And next graduate is Samuel Saitoti. Saitoti. We gave you my Saitoti my coffee. <laughs> okay. The next graduate is Samuel Wamui. Makofi Kwake. The next graduate is Mam Sara Situma. My coffee. <laughs> the next graduate is Scholastica Chepngetich Sambu. My coffee, Kwake. Now, the next graduate, the really is a problem in my tongue, but please give me the grace. The next graduate is Shifila. She, she, Shifila. Wanjiru Maina. Please forgive me. Next graduate is Shukuru Kateleru. Kat Adonis. 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 <laughs> Next graduate is Stella Kibi. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> and next graduate is Stella Weary. Angalia <laughs> Pisha. The next graduate is Sylvia Omondi. <laughs> Sylvia, Sylvia Omondi. Sylvia Omondi. Next graduate is Teresia Nafula Mahanu. <laughs> Were you also supposed to graduate? The next graduate is Thomas Manibe. <laughs> A coffee. Okay. Oh, this this uh, this last guy will have uh, the benefit of having the certificate issued by the professor. Professor, come. Professor, come. <laughs> Professor will issue the certificate. Mm, thank you. Virginia Wanjiku Maburu. Uh, 
Kofi. The next graduate is Wakini Sophie Karanja. The next graduate is Winfred, Winfred Washira. My coffee for Winfred. So, um, thank you very much, Professor. You can have your seat, sorry for that. Uh, so, that marks the end of all our graduates. Everybody have received their certificates. Kuna mutu ajapata certificate. The next graduate is the principal. <laughs> Where is this? This, uh, okay. The principal can get the certificate, isn't it? You can get it in G. In G. Through the hook, however. You can get it in G. That's C. That's a Benedict. Okay, okay. So, so, your yeah, principal, what is it? Your principal is not here. Let's the let's get it. The and last but not least, the principal of the first cohort SMLD class 2023-2024 finally graduates, and his name is George Oguang himself. <laughs> Great, great. Congratulations, Elder George. And the, because uh, they say that the last shall be the, the first, kindly, uh, Professor, we have Mudaki Clara Lumandi. Kindly come and receive your certificate. Congratulations. Here. Ah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Makofi Kwenu, Tena. You have done very well. Are the certificates looking good? Okay, but I will need them back. <laughs> so that they can be signed, isn't it? We want to authenticate and have them signed by the senior pastor and the pastor who's in charge of CD. So, congratulations to all. I think now we can proceed to the next part of the program. The next part of the program, we have... Um, uh, a charge to us, you know, as we are uh, graduating, we are given a charge to go out there now to serve God. And there's no better person to do it for us. Uh, we today have uh, with us uh, Professor Tim Mwangi Kiruhi. He's going to be our keynote speaker for today and he's going to give us a charge. Tim uh, Kiruhi is. Uh, he is actually an engineer. He is an engineer, but he left all that to serve God. He actually graduated in the University of Nairobi. Those, those many years ago with first class honors in bachelor of, uh, bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And he also has a master's degree from uh, 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 Ashusa Pacific University in the US. And he has mentored so many leaders. He is also a certified transforming leadership coach and he has actually coached many leaders, including those in power today. So we are very, very fortunate to have him here with us. He is currently the Vice Chancellor of International Leadership University here in Kilimani. And you can also enroll there, enroll there, enroll there to, to be a student. Yeah, I know that uh, they, we had passed the message about PAC, but also they have uh, a good, very good courses. Uh, we had said that uh, learning does not cease. Learning keeps going. So we are fortunate today to have him to speak to us and give us the charge as a climax for this particular day. So let's just put our hands together as we welcome our brother, <laughs> Professor Timothy Kairui, Kairui. And I also want to say that he has been very supportive in all the forums that are, are been in. We have called him many times and he's been a very faithful man. He's a mentor actually, he works with a young man. I remember that there was um, a time that he's been working with young men who have become leaders today. So he's not even leading, he's walking the talk. So let's uh, just welcome him as uh, we see what the Lord has laid in his hand for us today. Thank you very much.
Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a real joy to be here and share in the joy of the graduation. You are really making it look good. You know, I like the family part. I like the celebration. And uh, it's, a, it's a joy to be here. I apologize. I was not able to be with you from the beginning. I had a Somalia commitment that went a bit longer. And, uh, but I did keep in touch with Elder George. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank the leadership. The other elders who are here uh, from this assembly. And uh, just to say that it's been a joy to partner uh, with CTAM, not only in this congregation, just recently during this series on taking new territory. I was privileged to speak at CTAM Kembu Road. Uh, but I've been a, a visitor to many, many CTAM assemblies, uh, including also I've been privileged to speak to the pastors uh, several times during the annual retreat. So, so I consider it a privilege to be a partner in the ministry with CTAM. I came with a colleague, uh, he's at the back. Maybe he could stand if, okay. So he happens to be Timothy too, but it's not a requirement to, to be a Timothy to, be, to work at ILU. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, he is going to be at the back with a, with, you know, with a book table and a rather table where you can share, uh, hear a bit more about the International Leadership University. Before I share with us a message uh, that, that I've titled, Affirming and Growing Your Service Continually. Today we are celebrating some milestone for you, that you've come this far, you know, you've been equipped for the ministry, but we would like you to continue to affirm that uh, ministry, to grow it, and to do so continually. So I'll share a few thoughts about that, but before I do, to mention, uh, since I'm a good ambassador of International Leadership University, and we exist, we are just like PARC, we exist to equip you, we are sister institutions, uh, to equip the body of Christ for the work of ministry. That's why we exist. We are not a profit-making organization. We are sponsored by the Life Ministry, uh, which is also serves the body of Christ, and so our desire is to be able to do that. We have programs, like you see at the back, in three broad areas, the area of leadership and, and governance, which includes ma management, um, you know, things like marketing, business administration, organizational leadership, organizational development, uh, Christian ministry, corporate leadership, educational leadership, public governance, if you have interest in those areas, you can talk to my colleague Timothy or I at the back. You'll be able to get more information. Then, of course, uh, we existed for a long time as a theological institution for many, many years. Uh, for over 35 years, we were NIST, Nairobi International School of Theology, so some of you may be familiar with that name. And also we have programs in the area of theology, Christian ministry. Uh, so for leadership and governance, as well as theology and Christian ministry, we run from certificate all the way to PhD. And uh, we recently launched a children's ministry program. I actually had a sample brochure here. You can get some at the back for those of you who have interest in that area. And uh, we also were preparing a number of other short courses, Women in Leadership, now that uh, many of you as women uh, you know, are getting into roles of leadership. How do you do that in a biblical manner? Uh, we wanted, do not want it to be a, a, a death sentence to your family, which unfortunately in the secular society sometimes it is. Uh, we believe one can still lead as a, a, a woman leader whom God has raised and be successful in all the other areas. So biblically celebrating that. Um, early childhood education, for those of you who have a heart to retrain the young people, we know that that's when values are formed. And also we are doing uh, some programs in ICT and also servant leadership. Uh, big, big challenge in our country uh, that many people go into leadership for what it is in, in a, for them rather than to serve uh, their population and so on. Then finally, we have programs in counseling psychology. It's becoming a growing area, mental health and wellness. And uh, so we have programs from certificate all the way to masters in counseling psychology. So if that would be of area of interest, uh, you are welcome. Uh, we also have many, many short courses. At the back of our brochure that you get at the back, there are many short courses. In case you are feeling like, um, you know, maybe, well, I'm not sure that our academic programs are for me to commit two years or four years, uh, although I'll be giving as a challenge in the course of my presentation, then you can do the short courses. They have the same DNA and they will give you some of the same exposure. We believe that it's important to continually develop our character. Many of you have been trained here, you know, and uh, what will keep you going uh, for the long haul and be successful? is to have strong character. Ministry is born out of character. Not gifting or even training or skills. Although we are a training institution, we recognize the limitations of skills. Character is important. Of course, you need the competencies. That's what we are celebrating today. There are certain skills you've learned in the program. 
and there is a place for competencies, but also to be relevant to your context. You know, how can we be such a largely Christian country, but our impact is not being felt? So we are trying to focus on those three areas in whatever we do, develop character, grow in competence, and also help people to be relevant and to bring transformation to their context. So as always, maybe it's good to clarify, for social sciences, you're in the social sciences area, you don't have to have done a prior study in that area. As you heard, I did engineering. When I sensed my call to leadership, I went and did a master's in leadership. So you can move between the areas. So whatever level of education you have attained, you can go to the next level. We also allow for credit transfer. Uh, so if you have certain credits that are relevant and you already did a diploma in a certain area, you can come and do the degree without repeating those courses. Uh, they will, you know, will allow you to do that so long as you have good quality. You can do that. Oh, of course, all the training is online. So you don't have to travel all the way to Kilimani, you know, uh, in the, in near the city center. You can take your training right from here or wherever you are located. So in, in today, education is very accessible. Also, the payment is, of course, uh, in you know, several installments, uh, you know, every trimester to make it easier for most people to think because many people earn their money monthly and so on. Let me go on to what I would like to share with you, affirming and growing your service continually. Let me start with a story. I don't want to dampen the celebrative mood. I'll come back to the celebration a bit later. But I'm reminded of a story by the founder of a ministry called The Navigators. Some of you may be familiar with The Navigator Ministry, maybe in high school or campus. And uh, the founder of the ministry, uh, his name was uh, Dawson Trotman, was called to, uh, to speak, like give a charge similar to this one, this time it was to graduating students. There were about 60 of them, so it was a big retreat, they were all excited, they are finishing university, they are going to the working world, and uh, so he was asked to give them a charge. And at the end of his charge, he said, I'm very happy to be here. I can feel the energy, I can feel your passion, your commitment, all the 60 of you. However, I am afraid that after one year, only about half of you, only about 30 of you, will still be as excited and as passionate about what you are talking about you know, during this retreat. And then he said, after five years, I'm afraid that only a handful of you, maybe 10 or less, will really be still living up to the, you know, to the passion, to the commitment, and to the charge for which I have given you. And then, he said, unfortunately, maybe only two or three of you will enter your graves gloriously, having had victory throughout your lifetime. It's a bit of a sobering thought, isn't it? I'm here to encourage you, not to discourage you, <laughs> but to encourage you to be the two or the three. You know, because th there'll be a few, you know, in whatever context, there'll be a few who will walk with God and enter their gr graves gloriously. I want you to be part of that number. I want you to finish well, to put it in other words. I want you to be able to receive not only the well done here, but the well done out there. Amen? You know, to get the, the Lord's well done, good and faithful servant. You know, whatever you are entrusted with, you have multiplied. So there are four things that I think will be of help to you, and I'll try to just summarize them. So that you, you know, I know we would like to go and celebrate with family and so on, which is good. Uh, but there are four things I'd like to, call, uh, to bring to our attention. The first one is to remember that this is a calling from God. They all start with C. I'll give you the plan so that you know where, you are, where I'm going. The first one is, you have been called by God. I know you may have been invited by a friend to the training or maybe the leadership when it was announced. But ultimately, ministry is best when you remember is a calling from God, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, to remember that you need to continually grow in your content. I know you've learned a lot. I was very impressed uh, when I saw the certificate. Just a number of many, many courses that you've received. That is good, not good enough for the long haul. You have to continually be growing, adding to what you've learned so that you remain fresh and effective. Thirdly, I'll be talking about the need for courage. It's a very important Christian commitment for you to continue to take on new territories, for you to be able to continually serve the Lord, 
you will need a measure of courage. And I'll speak to that briefly. And lastly, I'll talk about the need for you to be continually learning. Continually learning and serving uh, so that you can finish well. So call, content, courage, and continuation. First, the call. Reflecting on the life of the prophet Ezekiel, uh, I'll read from Ch Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 4 to 8, just to get a context for that. This is, this is, they look at the call of Ezekiel, a prophet in the Old Testament. You know, and uh, we all like the work of the prophets, you know, and you know the exploits that they had. But look at the charge or the call that he had. This is the Lord himself speaking to Ezekiel. The people to whom I'm sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Does that feel familiar? That the people I'm sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Any of us who have tried to share the gospel know that sometimes people can be obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Whether they listen or fail, they will know that a prophet has been among them. You know, I know you've learned how to share your faith. You've been encouraged to share your faith. And sometimes you are afraid and thinking that people will reject me. The people will reject the message. Well, that's not about you. You as is to be faithful to do what you've been called to do. Whether they really listen or not, the Bible says, they will know that a prophet has been among them. Don't be afraid of them or their words or be terrified of them. Listen to what I say to you. Very, very important. There will be many opportunities for ministry. Some of them may be organized through the church. Most of them, because we live our life mostly outside of the church, we have to be listening to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what I tell you or what I say to you. In fact, he goes on to say, do not rebel. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 4 to 8. So God is not only calling us to an easy ministry. If you didn't know that, now you know. That uh, ministry is not an easy thing. Uh, it's, it's a big privilege. I've been privileged to be in full-time ministry for the last 35 years now. And a uh, wonderful opportunity. Many, many opportunities to serve God, to see God use me in ways that I would never have imagined. But it is good to remember that the calling is to an obstinate and stubborn people. It's not easy. No wonder the Bible says, the spirit you received, Romans chapter 8, verse 15, does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you, you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. We have the spirit of God to help us during those times when it is not easy, humanly speaking. Maybe one last thought here from Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, and verse 4. Every high priest, even like this is the Old Testament order, of course, is selected from among the people and appointed to represent the people in matters related to God. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is subject to witness. And no one takes this honor on himself. Go to remember that. You know that uh, really the calling is from God. No one takes the honor on himself if you do it the right way, but he or she receives it when called by God. So the Lord has called you. The Lord is calling you. It's not an easy road. It's not an easy road. But he's saying that if you trust me, if you walk in obedience, I will open doors for you. Why am I saying this? Because it's easy to, in the phase of training, you get excited about new skills and all the learning and so on, and now you begin to get deployed. You'll be assigned to different ministries by the leadership of the church or, you know, as opportunities that the Lord brings to you. And it is easy to begin to, to lose perspective. Sometimes you even find people grumbling and complaining. You know, how come nobody seems to notice me every time they have maybe new people being appointed? Nobody seems to see that I'm serving faithfully. You remember that you serve who? You serve God. Let me give you an example. This is what I encourage our team at the International Leadership University. I tell them they don't work for ILU, even though they receive a salary from ILU. Guess what? I tell them to remember always that they work for God at ILU. Are the two the same? No. When you work for God at Sita Mongata Rongai, it's very different from when you think that you work for Sitam Rongai. Even if you are a full-time minister here or pastor, and I'm not aware many of us, of course, you know, are in other professions too, but that you have been called by God, so you work for God. 
but you serve him at this point in no at this point in time you serve him here so who has called you that's the question when you clarify who has called you when there are challenges with service when people don't seem to notice who you are or appreciate you and so on you go back to god because he's the one who called you amen, amen. please remember that that the calling is from whom it's from god because then that way your allegiance, your faithfulness, your motivation, your you know, commendation will come from him. Secondly, is the need for growing in your content for ministry. Strong ministry, effective ministry, fruitful ministry is because a person is also growing their capacity. So I could also use the word capacity. In the case of Ezekiel, the Bible gives a very graphic illustration. I opened my mouth, this is the prophet Ezekiel writing, and he gave me the scroll, you know, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament days, you know, they would not write on paper, they would write on actually a scroll, which is usually animal skin, and that's where they would write, you know, the, the words and so on. And so he says, he gave me the scroll to eat. It tasted as sweet as honey. And then the Lord said to him, and I'm kind of uh, summarizing here, he says, between verses one and four, now go to the people, and speak my words. Brother and sister, we need to eat the scroll. We need to eat the word of God. We need to be filled with the word of God. We need to be filled with the capacity that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to do long-term ministry. Whereas I commend you and a very, very good program, I must commend CITAM for a very thoroughly drawn program for the CSLMD. But I must encourage us, add to it. Don't stay there. You'll find that soon, of course, the environment that we do ministry changes, the needs in the society change. So it is important for you to be continually sharpening yourself to be effective in the ministry. I opened my mouth. He gave me the scroll to eat. It tasted as sweet as honey. And now he says, now go. Now that you have the capacity for ministry, go and, uh, to the people and speak my words. Just this week, uh, one of my devotions was on the temptations of Jesus in Luke chapter 4. After the 40 days of fasting, we are familiar with that story, Luke chapter 4. And of course, he's tempted by the very three things that you are likely, you and I, to be tempted as we pursue ministry. What was the first temptation? About food, isn't it? You know, you've been fasting for 40 days, you know that food tastes very good. <laughs> and you, you know, but these are our daily needs. Let me put it that way. And uh, so the enemy is coming and saying, of course, turn these stones into bread and so on. And how does Jesus respond? It is written. Because he knew the word. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. What is he saying? I will trust God for my needs. I don't have to worry about that. When you are serving in the ministry, there will be times that you have your own needs. And there are ministry needs of one kind or another. Not just physical, it could be emotional, it could be financial, or whatever else it is, it is written. Secondly, the second area of te temptation or testing for Jesus was, you know, in the area of his identity. And so Satan comes and says, I'll give you all these kingdoms. You remember that in Luke chapter 4? You know, if you worship me, I'll give, you know, they've been entrusted to me. Again, the question of identity, the question of glory, you know, being recognized, being seen, you know, those things unfortunately become an issue when you are serving. When you are entering, you don't care about that. You are just serving the Lord because you love him. After some time, you are not careful. We begin to compete who is getting more attention, who is getting more noticed, all those things. Jesus says, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I hope you keep remembering that. When there will be temptation, people are saying, and how come they didn't recognize you this year, nobody appointed you? I'm serving the Lord. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The rest, the Lord, the Lord will take care of it. And our identity is not found in our positions or titles, but in the Lord Jesus Christ and his calling on us. Finally, the last temptation was around the issue of power. It's a big issue in ministry. Who is more effective? You know, whose ministry seems to be more recognized and things like that. And the, Jesus again said, you know, he was being tempted here that throw yourself down. It's a question of power. You know, the angels will come and hold you because, you know, you're a powerful person and so on. Jesus said, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to test. All of these were references to Old Testament passages. 
So Jesus, during this time in the wilderness and before, must have been eating God's word. Must have been preparing himself with the promises, even though he was a son of God, of course, and, you know, he was divine in that sense, but he's spending time in the word to prepare himself for future ministry. That's why I'm talking about us growing our capacity, our content with the word of God. Look at what the results are when Jesus overcame that testing or the temptations that we are likely to come through. In verses 14 and 15 of Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. That's one of the things that we look for in ministry. We want to be sure that our ministry has power. You know, and news about him, that recognition, the very thing that Satan was tempting him about, and news about him spread throughout the countryside. When you release those things to God, he gives them back to you. Not for yourself now, not for self-glory, but because you're honoring him. News about him spread throughout the countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues. He gets a, he gets a very platform that people maybe would have fought for. Who gets a platform? Who gets a pulpit? And so on. And everyone praised him. The very things that Satan was tempting him about, they usually come back when you put Jesus first and he's calling on your life. Amen? Don't put those things first. Seek him first and his kingdom, his righteousness. What does the Bible say in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33? And all these things will be added to you as well. So don't let that temptation happen. I've seen many, once too many, many people who started well, who loved the Lord, who wanted to serve him. But then as they serve him, issues of life and competition and all kinds of things come in and they choke that person from being effective. Avoid that temptation. Remember your calling, grow your capacity through the content of the word of God. Thirdly, and briefly, about courage. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verses, I keep referring to the prophet Ezekiel, I framed this according to his life. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 8 to 9. I'll make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. Your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified. Listen carefully and take to heart all the words I speak to you. The spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me around a loud rumbling sound as the glory of the Lord rose. I went in bitterness and in anger of my spirit with a strong hand of the Lord on me. It's interesting that the Lord is asking, you know, um, you know, Ezekiel, you know, Jikakamue, you know, be strong, you know, and so on. Be as unyielding and hardened as they are. Take courage. It's not going to be easy. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 may be familiar to many of us. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Ministry is often taken by taking steps of faith, taking initiative. Many times that I've got into various spaces, it was not because people opened the door, you know, but because you took courage. I can remember one opportunity, this is many years ago. I was a university student, and uh, I was involved actively in ministry. And during those days, there were guys who believed in communism. This is before the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. So there were guys who were communists on campus, and they were a strong group, Marxists. They believed that that was a philosophy that would save the country and so on. And I remember a prompting from the Lord to go to speak to one of them. And I wasn't sure how he would respond. He was well-built and strong. You know, he was an earlier year ahead of me, so I was a junior, so to speak. But I just felt the Lord was asking me to take, to take courage and do that. And as I went to him, you know, and I spoke a bit, we would do a survey with them. So we would ask them, who, are they, you know, who had influenced you in leadership? Uh, who are your role models? What would you like to become? What are some of your ideals? And then when I asked him, who are some of your examples? Who are some of your role models in life and in leadership? These are some of the student leaders, so they were Marxists and so on. I was completely surprised when he said, Jesus Christ. You know, I would have feared and thought this person would be completely anti-Jesus because he was saying he was Marxist. But he said Jesus exemplifies many of the values that we Marxists believe in. So it was very easy then for me to say, is it okay if I share with you more about how you can know Jesus? Opportunity came right there, isn't it? But initially, I, was, I would have been scared. I would have thought, this is a Marxist. This one is, don't go here, isn't it? 
God is, you know, and so on. He was very cooperative. I shared the gospel with him. He didn't receive Christ right, right then. But we had many opportunities to keep revisiting that story before he graduated. Take courage, my brothers and sisters. You know, these ministry opportunities are not always going to be served here for you. It is you to take opportunity and so on. A number of years ago, and maybe now nine years ago, I felt the prompting of the Lord to do something from my home county. I come from the county of Nyandaro. And I, you know, I've been training people in leadership when I got to the leadership space, by the grace of God, around Africa, around the world. But I kept feeling I need to maybe give a contribution back to my home county. So to cut a long story short, I took an initiative, started right in my village, and that initiative went on to grow to become something that influenced all of my county, that the top students in the, you know, KCP and so on, even though the school had really gone backwards and so on, the same village I came from, eventually they would produce the best students in the county. And so I was honored in 2016 when Nyandarwa County was doing their first county prayer breakfast. You know, the MCAs debated in the chamber, you know, in their local assembly there for the, for the whatever. And by the grace of God, because some of them knew about the initiative I had taken, they said the only person who should speak to us is, you, you know, you as truly. I was honored to be able to do that. And speak to my county leadership. My governor was there and so on. Nobody gave me that platform, isn't it? I took it by <laughs> taking courage to do something to bring transformation. A few years later, actually about a year later, uh, when I, was, I, I applied, that one I, I, I hesitated to do. I must say somebody prompted me um, to get into leadership to, to do with education. I was encouraged to apply for a position as a chair of a council for a university. Universities have got councils, just like the schools have got boards, the universities have councils, and of course the vice chancellor reports to the chair of the council, or the council of the university. And so it was a long story how just the Lord got me into that, but eventually I was challenged to, to join. And when I was hesitating, maybe I need to share with you because I'm talking about courage. Uh, so the vice chancellor of this particular university had gone to a friend of mine, somebody I had mentored and trained, and so he was also doing some things to do with the leadership in his university somewhere in Eldoret. And uh, when the vice chancellor came to him, he said, no, I'd like you to give me some names of people that you think can be a good chair of our council. Uh, they, of course, the vice chancellor was trying to make sure they get a good team that would work with them. And so the person asked, what are the qualifications? So he said, a PhD, so education has a place, <laughs> and also experience in leadership. And so the person says, you know, I could think of many people. He's a, he himself is a professor, so he has many people that he knows in that space. But uh, the vice chancellor, almost as an afterthought, said, oh, by the way, I would also like them to be people of integrity. Unfortunately, I told you about ministry long term is character. The professor said, I'm sorry, I cannot vouch for many of the people I had on my list. I'm not sure the last item I can say is true of them. So, the, you know, the vice chancellor asked, you don't have any other friend, any other person that you know? I said, I have one other one. I'm not sure he would get into this because he's mostly you know, been interested in Christian ministry and so on. He said, no, but does he meet all the three qualifications? The person said, yes, so he said, give me that one. So anyway, so the vice chancellor of the university, this time I'm not in education at all. I'm not even involved anywhere in mere education, apart from teaching once in a while. I did have my PhD, and so I was teaching once in a while. Incidentally, at an international leadership university, I was a volunteer teacher there for seven years. There's a place for using your skills, give them, even if it's not for money, you know, and so on. So I had been teaching there for seven years. So anyway, so eventually the, when the vice chancellor of the university called me to ask, would you consider being, have you seen the advert? I had actually seen the advert. I was thinking about applying, I said no, why not? I said those things come with politics and they can smear your name and other things. I would rather not get into that space. I'm serving the country in other ways. I said, no, no, you come highly recommended, think about it. It happens to have been my birthday that year. So I had a joke with my wife, you know, imagine me being a chair of a council somewhere. <laughs> and she also laughed at it, at the idea. You know, we didn't think, both think it would be anywhere near that. This is a small university in Eldoret. But uh, the vice chancellor calls me after three days and says, have you changed your mind? And I said, no. And asked me, if you don't apply, this is a place for courage. Many other Kenyans are going to apply, not to come and help our institutions, but to come and take everything they can from this institution. 
How will you feel when you can see our institution being brought down by corruption? And yet you had everything it takes to stop it, but you simply did not want to be inconvenienced. It's a challenge to courage, isn't it? And you can think about that in about every other space in this country. We may be complaining about some things not going well and so on, but where are the Christians? Are we taking those spaces and standing for Christ? Anyway, to cut a long story short, when I was called for the interview, they asked me, what have you done in education? And I told them the story of my village and how we have tried to transform education and so on. Unknown to me, and I also talked about some other initiatives, by the grace of God, I've been, I've been helping to give leadership to another ministry called ELNET, Ethical Leadership Network, those of you in the business space. Just last week, they had a collaboration with Sitam Kiambu Road, and uh, that's an area where just in terms of, is it possible to do business correctly in this country? Even with all the corruption we have and fake fertilizer, fake this, fake that, can we do things the right way and be successful without cutting corners and, and so on? So I talked about that. And known to me, this panel was looking for those kind of values. So without going into all the details, I was appointed to be the chair for the University of Nairobi. I would never have imagined. You know, I'm, I didn't think I was in those, that league, you know. And don't look at my titles now, I didn't have those ones. <laughs> but God allowed me to be able to do that. So take courage. Well, the courage didn't need to stop there. I finished, I, I went on to my term, but I could not finish my term. The very things that I was fearful about happened. And uh, we had to walk away, so to speak. I never finished my three-year term. But I left with my head high. So, you know, the CS who was there, Dr. Fred Matienge, had never met me, didn't know me, it's not my tribesman, but uh, just really somehow loved what he read about me. In fact, I don't think you mind me saying this, uh, that he told me, actually, I didn't believe you are for real. So I had, asked to, I had to ask the intelligence, you know, NSIS, to look out whether these things I'm seeing here and what I'm hearing is true about you. And they said they returned a good report. <laughs> so, so that's how I got into that position. But I didn't finish my term. Uh, he was very resolute. That he tell, kept telling them, as yeah, so long as you know, it is him, even if the court nullifies, I know he's the right person, I put him back. So I was appointed four times to the same position by C.S. Matiangi. Doesn't know me, had never met me, <laughs> but God just gave me favor. When he left and went to the Ministry of Interior, most of us would remember that a few years ago, I, had, I, you know, I, I felt I had done what needed to be done. By the grace of God, I was able to start some things. Some of you may be at the University of Nairobi. By the grace of God, I was able to initiate some things like the foundation, which is now working, a mentorship program for the students and so on, which they also implemented and other things during my time as a chair. But I didn't finish my three years. I only served for about a year and a half. And I, but I thought I had done my bit, Lord. I had no doubts that I had fulfilled what I needed to do. And I wasn't going to look for anything else. I wasn't going to see any politician or anything like that. Surprise to me, a young Muslim lawyer who was part of my council had been observing. You never know who's looking. So he's the one who went to the next CS, Amina Mohammed. And of course, they were able to talk <laughs> and say, there's somebody here you need to appoint. You know, in fact, he, all of us had been removed, including him. And he said, I'm not even worried about myself. This is what he told me later. He never consulted with me before going. But after he went to see the CS, he said, I've told the CS, I don't even want to be appointed. But for you, you must continue serving this country. This is somebody from another faith who is seeing something. Can you talk about see the power of character? So continue to pursue the Lord. Have that character. It will keep opening doors for you. So I was appointed by God's grace to chair another council at Taraka. I don't know whether any of you come from Taraka County, Taraka Nidi. Okay, I can see one or two. Now I need to say something about your county. <laughs> when I looked for Taraka University College, where I was assigned, first of all, the PS told me, I don't know whether you can take this chairman now, that's the title they would use there, because I know you've been our chair for the University of Nairobi, which is 84,000 students. This little college is 200 students. Are you willing to do that? That's a test of character, isn't it? And I told, uh, fortunately I had a clarity. I said, I, I asked the Lord for freedom to, to, to take this role. By the way, that was important for me. I, I skipped that, I prayed about it. Don't just do it because people ask you. Talk to the Lord first, isn't it? Get his man, his calling. So God gave me the freedom to apply. So, and I did not even apply for the University of Nairobi. I had applied for another smaller university. So if you have now found me fit to serve there, I'll do that. 
Oh, the other people are very happy. They say, ah, now he's serving where he belongs, you know, and things like that. It is that opportunity where I was were able to grow that university. I want to thank the vice chancellor. Now that time he was principal and others. We grew that little institution. Within a year, we had 3,000 students. So, and it is during that time when the International Leadership University was looking for a vice chancellor and I was asked to apply. If you had asked me to apply earlier, I would never have been you know, interested because I didn't think I knew how to grow an institution. It is being in the small place that gave me the opportunity. So God's way is not man's way. Yes. The way down may be God's way to take you up. Yes. That's why you don't need to look at uh, you know, whether people are recognizing you, whether you're being praised and so on. Leave that to the Lord. He take care of it. So when I was asked, I was asked whether I knew how to grow an institution. I said, well, I have a little experience. We've been able to grow this institution within the last one year from 200 to 3,000. That's what earned me the position I am in today by the grace of God. So serve faithfully. Serve continually. Keep growing your character. Take courage. Do what is needed. And, so, and don't compromise. It doesn't matter. You know, even if it looks like, you know, whatever, it is difficult and so on, do the right thing. When I finish my first term, my, my first term I'll finish my story here, then i do the last point. Um, I, I, I knew I had finished my term. I said farewell. Uh, because now I was already at the International Leadership University, I told them I'm not going to continue my term uh, or to apply for another term, although I was eligible for a second term as a chair of the council. Now another miracle happened. Another CS who had never said, met me, who, who I didn't think knew me, <laughs> this time it was a late Professor George Magoha. He was a CS for education. So when the opportunity to appoint a new council came, he was given, these are the people who are on the council, would like you to appoint a new council. Their term has lapsed. He said, I know that first name. I saw that person fighting for what was right at the University of Nairobi, even though it was difficult. Keep that name, remove everybody else. <laughs> All my colleagues who had applied were asking me after that, Chair, why are you not honest with us? <laughs> because how come you are the only one who... <laughs> so I, even today, I have the unique privilege of being the vice chancellor of one university and serving as the chair of council, my term comes to an end next year of Saraka University. Now it's a full-fledged university, a chartered university. <laughs> Can you see where steps of courage might take you? Even when you don't know what it is that God is calling you to do. It may be that initial contact to share the gospel with somebody at the place of work. That will open new frontiers for you. It may be calling your community together, your extended family, and saying this Christmas, I would like to invite everybody to my home and you bring a pastor or somebody to share the gospel, you never know what God will do through that initiative, isn't it? I've seen healing in, of relationships in my extended family. I've been privileged, even though cultural is not even allowed, I've been able to reunite some of my uncles with their, with their, with their wives who had, who had separated. You know, God will allow you to do things that are not even culturally right, isn't it? Because you are the servant of the King of Kings. You are the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take courage to do what is right. And lastly, continuation. In Ezekiel chapter 3, I'll refer one last time to Ezekiel, verses 2 to 27. I have made you a watchman for the people. So hear the word I speak and give them a warning from me. If they do not turn from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved yourself. Continue to be faithful. You are now a watchwoman or a watchman at the place of work. Maybe if you didn't know that, you have one more item on your job description. Most of you who work formally have a job description, a letter of appointment, isn't it? With a job description. And it spells out all the responsibilities you have at that place of work. Or there is one more that you didn't know about. Or maybe you have not thought about. And maybe even your boss does not know about it. You are the watchman or the watchwoman for the Lord Jesus Christ in that place. You are the witness for Christ. You are the ambassador for Christ at that place of work. So if your workplace is corrupt, who do you think the Lord is going to ask? It comes with the responsibilities. Don't just rejoice of being the watchman or watchwoman, isn't it? It comes with the responsibility. He's going to ask, how come people here are not sensitive to spiritual matters? Have you been sharing the gospel? How come people here are not growing in their faith? Have you been encouraging them? You know, to go to places, come to church when you have revivals and other meetings, or to be at other places 
have a Bible study, and other ways that you can grow the spirituality of the people. I take it as my responsibility, since I still serve as, as a chair, to use opportunities that come to me to try and influence the university at Tharaka, as well as, of course, International Leadership University, to move towards God's purposes. Last year, just to give you an example, um, I felt that there was a need for us to do a seminar or a workshop, uh, you know, public lecture, on ethics and integrity. And at first, I don't think the vice chancellor would mind me, you know, telling on him a little bit. At first, he told me, I don't think, Chair, this one will have a lot of interest. We have tried many lectures, they never get people. People don't come for those things. So I told him, no, 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 I think this one will be important. So I got a friend, he actually lives in this neighborhood, Bob Nyanja, and uh, one other person you know, who are some of the awardees of LNET, where I used to work, uh, who have been certified as people of integrity. And I told him, publicize this, talk about this. By the grace of God, virtually every staff member and lecturer turned up, and so many students came, he told me they have never seen such a group. But we are talking about living right, doing things right, living with integrity. That's my call. Over and above being a chairman, <laughs> I must remember that I have a mission from Christ. Amen? And the same thing with all of us. We've been called to be watchmen, watchwomen, so to speak, for Christ. Let me close with Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. And do it not only when their eye is on you to carry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. There'll be times when you are at the workplace or serving in whatever role. And you know, nobody seems to notice, people don't seem to give you the credit due to you. Don't worry. You serve the one who called you. Do it with sincerity of heart and reverence, reverence for the Lord. And then the famous words, many of us know verses 23 here. Whatever you do, work at it, at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So as we go away from the joy and the excitement of graduation, I hope now you remember that you are called by God. Your calling is from him, to represent him, to honor him, to serve him. The rest is secondary. What other things that come, recognition and praise and you know, all of those things, those are secondary. My first duty is to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then secondly, to remember that you need to grow your capacity continually. You have come this far, that is very good, I commend you but you need to keep scaling new heights. There's a place for higher education, further training, more ministry of exposure, get a mentor, or whatever it is that will help to grow your capacity. But of course, all anchored on the word of, 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 you know, of on, on God's word. That's why Jesus would keep saying, it is written, it is written, it is said. Thirdly, take courage. Could it be that there are areas you've been concerned about? And SLMD has exposed you to many issues Governance in our country, leadership issues, ministry issues, and so on. Doctrinal issues. Could it be that God is calling you to bring correction and change to a situation? And you've been wondering who will do it. Well, you know who it is now. It is you. You know, it's interesting. When you walk through the city, we do see different kinds of things. Some of us see the children, the street children who are there. Because God has given you a heart for compassion and a ministry to care for them. The other people who go to, go to the same city, they walk the same street, they don't even see them. Because that's not the calling that God may be having on them. It's not that they are bad people. <laughs> they just have a different calling and gifting. So whatever it is that concerns you, issues that cause you to be concerned, and you feel that something needs to be done, guess what? God is calling you to do it. And you've been equipped now here. You have what it takes to take the first step. Yes, you may need to partner with others. You may need to grow in capacity in that area. God will take care of those things. But take the initiative, take courage. And finally, continue in what you have learned. Be faithful. Continue you know, to grow. Continue to serve. That way, you'll be able to affirm your ministry. May you finish well. Thinking about the, 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 the words of Dawson Trotman. Be those two or three who will enter their graves gloriously, having completed the race, isn't it? To be able to say with the Apostle Paul, 
I have fought a good fight. I have kept, no, I've, I've, I've kept the faith. Um, and, uh, sorry, I've kept, I've, uh, it's escaping me. I've, 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 uh, what's the first one? I, I fought a good fight, yes. I've, I've run the race, I've kept the faith. And now what? A crown of glory awaits. Amazing, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. So let's continue to finish well. The chicken and a pig had a conversation. And the pig was complaining. No, not, uh, no, 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 the chicken is the one who took initiative and said, let's give the master a special breakfast tomorrow. I will contribute all the eggs that the master needs. I would also, I know the master likes sausages. I would like you to contribute some sausages for the master. The pig said, it's not fair. Why? Because for you, laying an egg is what? It's just a convenient thing to do. You keep your life, isn't it? For me to give the master sausage, I must lay down my life. Brothers and sisters, you're not being called to become a chicken ministry. You are being called to the pig ministry. Laying your lives for the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may serve him and bring him glory to the uttermost. God bless you. I want to take it back to our pastor. Wow. Coring. Content, courage, and continuity. Or a charge. We've been called to serve and serve with integrity and with diligence. What is your resolution for today? Thank you, Prof. It's a timely message. What if that's what we needed. It's sobering, isn't it? Yes. Very sobering, but we are ready for it. That's why we came through the 12 months of training so that we can be here, we can have such a call so that we can go forth in strength and faith. The Lord bless you so much. You did what the Lord wanted you to do, did it well, and you have had it. May the Lord help us to be those ones who will be the last ones to be found even when everybody else is not there. That, is, that must be you, isn't it? Amen, amen. So, I see our, our pastor has come, but we've been seated for a while. So, we want to, have, um, to take um, one or two praise and worship songs. We take a break for, as we sing, you can lash out and come back. So then we can continue with the program. What we are remaining with is just a few, maybe an hour or so, and then we'll be done. And, but I would wish that we can have a quick health break so that then you will not be enduring when our pastor is uh, telling us uh, the, what he wants to tell us. So praise and worship, if you can join us, and uh, then you can uh, lead us in one or two songs. And then after that, then uh, we shall uh, be guided on what next. So as uh, we continue with praise and worship, please, you can, if you want to rush for a health break, you can rush and then come back. Don't make uh, uh, half camps outside. No camping outside. Okay. All right. Praise and worship. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Hey. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. 
I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading, I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading, I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Can we kindly stand up and sing? Stand up, all of us. Let's. My little rose, I'm trading, I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my sickness and my pain, my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Akinita, 
Don't sit down. Uh, we want to call everybody back. Please, let's get back. We continue with the program. For those who are outside, hope you can hear us. Kindly get back. Sisi wote tutafanya fanya kazi fanya fanya kazi fanya kazi ya bwana na tuseme akitu continuing we have been uh, charged and uh, given the 
words that uh, we need to carry forth with and know that uh, the work continues. So I am looking for those people who are yet still studying outside. We said no camps outside, and I think we've just been told about integrity. Isn't it? All right, so we want to have the next session, and uh, our pastor, uh, deputy senior pastor, Reverend Mauricio, is here with us. And uh, he's going to give us his words, and you can t we can take our seats. I understand there are some people who have just come who were not there when the certificates were being given. I don't know whether we should give them the opportunity to enjoy what you enjoyed. Okay. The A's have it, eh? Okay, so we'll do that towards the end, but for now we continue with the program. I'm looking for people to settle down so then uh, when the pastor comes, we will not be having a lot of movements. For those people who are outside, Those people who are outside, I can see you and I might call your name now that I know most of you. <laughs> All right, so I uh, want to give this chance to our pastor in charge of uh, CED and the pastor in charge of School of Ministry to invite him and uh, also have a, um, a word with us. It has been very good and we welcome you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Miano. We can put our hands together for his leadership. Congratulations, class of 2024. Are you happy to be the graduating class, the very first class in Sitam, Rongai? You've not appreciated yourselves as if you're pay setters. You are the inaugural class of School of Ministry and Leadership Development in Sitam, Rongai you have already made history. Clap for yourself. First and foremost, let me greet every one of us in the name of Jesus. It's good to see every one of us, the, the graduates. Today you're graduates, tomorrow you'll be graduates. And we want to welcome those who are, are listening in or viewing this and you are here by virtue of the graduates giving you an invitation. We want to welcome every single one of you. I know a number of you have come with loved ones, with family members, and uh, with especially young people. I've seen quite a number of young people who I believe are inspired by this occasion. And so I want to bring my own congratulations and those of our senior pastor, that uh, this being the very, very first class, we truly want to extend congratulations to every single one of the graduates and to say that you've done it, you've gone through the rigors of the program, and here you are, you have done it. Clap for yourselves once again. Because much has already been said, I want to limit myself to a few remarks, and uh, first and foremost is to say that uh, we are so delighted that uh, God is already answering the prayer. There's a prayer recorded in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, where we are told, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Why? Because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, and we are to pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest. I'm so delighted that in Sitam Rongai, God is answering that prayer. Why? The Lord of the harvest has raised laborers for the harvest field. And you are that laborer. Your neighbor is that laborer. And there are great exploits that will be done because capacity has been built. And so this morning, I want to reflect on some powerful words that were penned by a philosopher, a person who was multi-gifted. He was very, very well endowed with different gifts from the Lord. Not only was he an academician, he was, as I've mentioned, he was 
this person who was engaged in the life of the mind. He was a philosopher. But beyond that, he was a poet. He wrote a number of songs. It's, if we were to look at it today, he would have well over a hundred albums. As per the record that we're given, this man composed a thousand and five songs. And he was not only in that area of poetry, music, the arts. He was also engaged in science. He studied trees. He studied animals. He did botany. He did zoology. And he went ahead and he engaged in various areas. And uh, he wrote his thesis, and his thesis is actually recorded. Maybe let's call it a dissertation. His dissertation is recorded for us in the scriptures. And just in case you are doubting or wondering who I'm talking about, this is none other than the wisest man who ever lived. And his name is? I heard somebody saying Safira. Did you say Safira? The wisest man who ever lived. His name is? And yes, the things that I've mentioned, they are actually recorded for us in his list of exploits. In the book of First Kings, if you read chapter 4, you will see an account of the different things that King Solomon did. He composed a thousand and five songs. He was in the space of botany, studying plants. He was in another space called dendrology, studying trees. He was in another space called uh, zoology. If you read Proverbs, you'll see how he considered the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. He was a very well-learned fellow. And he wrote his dissertation. It is called Ecclesiastes. He did research, and he looked at life, and he comes to a conclusion at the end of that book. But before we get to the conclusion, there are just these words that I want to share with you as the inaugural class, the cohort of, C of uh, SMLD in Rongai. And these words are recorded for us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. If you can make your way there, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. And I want to share on what, very briefly, what I've entitled a 10 out of 10 leader. Are you seated next to a 10 out of 10 leader? You know those times when a teacher would come with the, with the papers, the cut that had been marked, and most times it's a lady and she would be holding them close to her chest, and she would begin to call the names one by one, and with every name being mentioned, your heart is palpitating more and more, wondering what, what is your score. If you get 10 out of 10, you, put, you, you give yourself a pat on the back, isn't it? Because you've done well. You have exceeded expectations. And in this portion of scripture, I believe there are things which will help us uh, uh, excel as leaders, as servants of the Lord, as ministry workers. And this is in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 10. If you're there, shout aloud, amen. amen. The scripture says, and I'm reading from the New King James, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. It's on our screens. We can read it together. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. Remember, Solomon is speaking from a vast range of knowledge. He has surveyed creation. He has been inspired by the Lord. He has been given supernatural wisdom, spiritual wisdom. And one of the things he observes is this whole aspect of sharpening ourselves, building our capacity, developing ourselves so that we can be more effective and more efficient. And he says that if the axe is dull and you do not care to sharpen it, then what will end up happening is that you will expend a lot of energy. And not just energy. Think of other resources. If the axe is dull, you're going to put a lot of other resources, such as time. You will use more time 
to take that which, to engage in that task which could have been done in a shorter time if only you had cared to sharpen it. So in order to be a 10 out of 10 leader, we need to stay at the cutting edge. We need to be sharp. We need to be able to keep building our capacity, developing ourselves so that we remain on the cutting edge of what God is doing. And these words are echoed or paraphrased by one of the presidents of the states, Abraham Lincoln. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. If you had the task of chopping down a tree. I wonder how many of us would start where Lincoln started. He says that if he has half a day or a quarter of a day to chop down the tree, what he's going to do is that he'll focus the bulk of his energies and efforts towards sharpening the axe. And I am so grateful to God that over this past year, the ladies and gentlemen seated here have been going through sharpening. You have been sharpened in various areas. In so far as Old Testament survey is concerned and the New Testament survey, in your personal leadership, you have been sharpened. In matters to do with stewardship and spiritual formation, you have been sharpened. In some key doctrines of our faith, you have been sharpened. You've been equipped with practical skills on how to engage in ministry. You have been sharpened. I am glad that over the past number of months, what the Lord has been doing through different servants who have been coming to minister to us is that you have been going through sharpening. And you are on track to being a 10 out of 10 leader. And so I want to challenge us with one of my favorite parables as I draw to a close. And I wonder which your favorite parable is. Would you just find out from your, 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 your neighbor what parable they love? The one that ministers to them. The one that blesses them. And if we had roving mics, we would sample. All right. I want to hear those answers. Which parable is that that really blesses you? Our Lord often used stories. He was a master storyteller, and he, he knew how to unpack deep spiritual truths using ordinary stories. Anyone wants there's a hand at the back? I just want to hear some of those parables that stand out for you. The parable of the lost coin. All right, the parable of the lost coin. Anyone else who wants to share with us? What other parables do you love? They minister to you, they stand out for you. Aha, there's a, okay, there's another hand there. The parable of the sower. Can you tell us just why? Why, why, why does that one bless you? The parable of the sower tells us we have very many recipients, but there's only one that is so fattered enough mm -hmm. to have the growth of the kingdom of God. Wow. Do you think you're seated next to good soil, by the way, if you look at you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge them. Don't look at them and say, whoa, naka rocky soil. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Any other parables? Yes. The parable of uh, the rich fool. Uh-huh. Why? Because you might be rich, you are rich, but uh, are you using your wealth in the right direction? Wow. Stewardship, isn't it? Let's, let's sample maybe three more. What other parables do you, do you love? And tell us why. The parable of the ten virgins, the five wise ones, and the five that are unwise. And my prayer has always been, I should be among the five that are wise. I should not be found sleeping. Aha. Wow. The ten wise. Are you seated next to... 
<laughs> okay. Maybe two more, two more. Thank you, Miriam, for being a servant leader. <laughs> oh, the parable of the vine and the vine dresser. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, we are, uh, when God gives you a gift, he desires that you will bear fruit and fruit that shall abide. And when the fruit is not there, he gives you some time so that you can be able to bear fruit. He prunes, he does all that so that we can be able to become what he wants us to be. Amen. The parable of the... Okay, last. Uh, the parable of, uh, of the talents. Yeah, that one seems to have some amens on this side. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that uh, we were born to, to, actually we were born to work. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we are doing here, we are impacted, so we need to go out there and reach, and reach others. Wow, wow. Well, you can continue to discuss even beyond this, this uh, occasion. The parable I want to share with us is the parable of the pencils. I want to share with us the parable of the pencils. The pencil maker took a pencil aside just before putting him into the box. This pencil was now ready to be placed into the box and to be dispatched into the bookshops and to make its way into the hands of an eager pupil, boy or girl, a student, and to be used for great things like writing exams and drawing great art. And just before the pencil was placed in the box and dispatched into the world, the pencil maker said to the pencil, there are five things I'd like you to know before I send you out into the world. And he said, Always remember them, never forget them, and you will become the very best pencil you can be. He said to him, number one, you will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. Number two, my dear pencil, you will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you will need it in order to become a better pencil. Number three, you will be able to correct any mistakes you might make because this particular pencil had something at the top of it called what? And then number four, the most important part of you will always be what is on the inside of you. And then the last thing the pencil maker said to his dear pencil, on every surface you are used on, you must leave your mark. No matter what the condition, you must continue to write. And I wish to submit to us, friends, that as we now come to, we draw to a close of our ceremony today, this beautiful occasion, in order to be that 10 over 10 leader, these five things will do as well if we'll put them into memory. As you go forth from this day, remember that you will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. Allow yourself to be held in the Father's hands. As Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 18, where he saw that illustration of clay, of clay in the hands of the potter, I pray that every single one of us will remain in the potter's hands. As you remain in the potter's hands, you will do the exploits. God will do the exploits through you. As you remain in his hands, you will add value to ministries. You will be a blessing 
to the body of Christ, not only here, but even beyond. Remain in his hands. Number two, and this is not easy, but it is true. In order to be the 10 out of 10 leaders, we need to remember that we will experience painful sharpenings from time to time, especially in church circles. And anyone who's been sharpened would have said amen. There will be times ministry workers will step on your toes. Tell your neighbor, sharpen him. There will be times you will be talked about behind your back. Nudge the other one, sharpen him. There will be times stones will be picked up like they did for David, and they will want to pelt the stones at you. Ambia jirani sharpening. If you're in leadership, there may be slander, there may be gossip, there may be malice, there may be character assassination. There are times of painful sharpening. Jesus said, in this world, we shall have many trials, many troubles, but be of good cheer. So don't give up on your leadership journey because of painful sharpenings. You will experience the painful sharpenings in the form of grief and loss. Just this morning, I was together with one of our dear members, actually one of our ministry workers. She serves in the music team. And a number of us know that uh, she lost her husband, young husband, young family, in a tragic road accident. Those are times of pain. Those are times in the valley. Those are times of painful sharpening. Number three, you will be able to correct any mistakes you might make. The reality is that even with this kind of certificate, it does not mean that you are a flawless leader. Or are you seated next to a flawless leader? Are you seated next to one who will never make mistakes? Are you seated next to one who will never make an error? The truth is, there will be mistakes that you and I will make, isn't it? Meaning we need to extend grace to others, but we also need to extend grace to ourselves. And remember, there are times you'll make those mistakes. But those mistakes can be corrected. Of course, others are costlier. Some are more costly than others. But whatever the case, I love what the pencil maker said to this pencil. He said, there's room for correction. There's room for growth. There's room for development. Second last and most important in my view. The most important part of you lies on the outside of you. Because man looks at the outside, isn't it? The most important part of you is what is character, consistency, values. Those are the things when titles come and go, what's on the inside remains. Some of you are HODs, heads of department, some of you are deputies, some of you are members of ministry committees. The reality is that all these things are transient. They come and they what is most important is what lies on the inside of us. And so let's pay attention to that. Let's remember the words of Paul to Timothy. Watch your life and your doctrine. Pay attention to it. Let's remember the words of Solomon, Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart above all else. Guard your budget. I mean, isn't that what he says in Proverbs? I, I think he says that, Elder Were, isn't it? A guard above all else. What should we guard? Our material possessions. Above all else, protect your car from any scratch. Above all else, guard thy hair. <laughs> wow, what does he say? Above all else, 
guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. The most important part of you, 10 out of 10 leader, will always be what's on the inside. Man may look at the outward, God sees the heart. And I pray that when he sees into our hearts, he'll see hearts that are becoming more and more like his son, Jesus Christ. Lastly, I pray that on every surface you are used, you will leave your mark. There was one amen. On every surface you are used, leave your mark. In CD, leave your mark. In the Sunday school classroom, leave your mark. As a youth worker, leave your mark. As a member of that ministry committee, leave your mark. Add value. Let it be known that not, not so much so for your own sake, not for our name, because we're not building our names. It's about the name above all other names. I love that, is it an African proverb that says, even the snail, slow as it is, what does it do? You can know a snail was here. And I do not like sn I, I When I get to heaven, one of the questions after, Adam, Adam, why did you do that? After that, I'll ask our good Lord, of all the things you would have created, snails. One time in the rainy season, I was just wearing my shoes. Please, please just imagine with me. It is the rainy season. I have put on my socks. I am ready, ready to go into the day. And so I put on the first one. Then I put on the next one. Lo and behold. <laughs> what would you do? Behold, I realized there was a snail in my shoe. That snail left its mark. I discarded that shoe. <laughs> I've never forgotten that experience. And my prayer is that as we go forth as ministry workers, as leaders, please leave your mark. Add value. Make a contribution. Add something that they'll say when so-and-so served in this ministry, they, they, they brought a certain change because we are the salt of the earth and we're the light of the world. And the pencil maker signed out and said, no matter what your con condition, you must continue to write. So keep on writing, keep on serving, keep on leading, keep on praying, keep on teaching Sunday school, keep on being given to the ministry in Sitam Rongai, and I believe that by the grace of God, we will have 10 out of 10 leaders, leaders who are on the cutting edge, and our ministry will get the better for it. May you truly be that sharpened pencil. When you get dull, may you be sharpened yet again. And may it result in much praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. I'm looking forward to serving with the first cohort. Hey, the first cohort, SMLD. Congratulations for finishing and finishing strong. And congratulations for going through that process. So let's believe and pray. Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence this afternoon. And we are so grateful that you have given us an opportunity, Lord, to be developed, to have our capacity built up as leaders in the vineyard. We are grateful for every facilitator who came and added value in our lives. We're grateful for every person who came and facilitated learning. We're grateful, Lord, for every retreat. We're grateful for every assignment. We're grateful, dear Lord, for the journey through which you've taken this SMLD cohort. And my prayer is that, Lord, there would be laborers in your vineyard. There would be the answer to the prayer of Matthew 10, where you say, pray to the Lord of the harvest and pray earnestly that he may send forth laborers. I pray that in this our church, this class will add so much value. They will make a mark in the different ministries represented here. 
may they leave their mark. May they be the people of Daniel 11.32, the people who know their God, and therefore they do exploits. And Lord, I pray that when all is said and done, Lord, we will have that Christ-like character on the inside, that we will be like our Lord, that we will be like our Savior, that we will be like Jesus Christ. Lord, would you help us? And may we remain in your hands, because in your hands is the most effective place that we can be. We thank you and we bless you, dear Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me hand it back to Prof. Thank you so much, Pastor. One thing that is coming clear is that uh, as you serve, you must empty yourself. We are told about the pig sacrifice. The pencil, as you leave the it leaves the mark, what happens? It's shortening, isn't it? It's a clear message to me about serving that uh, you must not go to the grave with anything. You must go empty. If you have been given, you must empty it. That thing that was put inside the pencil, it must be used to leave a mark. How will you leave the mark? This is an interesting graduation because even the principal was graduating <laughs> with the students. <laughs> I found it hilarious that the teachers, <laughs> the, the principal, everybody was graduating. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And then the one who was helping him to graduate was a student. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we are coming to the end of our program. Thank you so much, uh, Leverett, for those, uh, those words. I think uh, the, it leaves a mark, the, 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 the parable of the pencil. It leaves a mark in me and reminds me that uh, that's uh, what you've been called to do. So we are coming to the end of our program, and we can say that indeed it has been a good one. A few things to do. So how many of us came and you are not issued with a certificate? Just stand up, I see how many we are. Just stand up. I want to make a decision on uh, whether, what do we do next. The students are not supposed to be t sitting there. The students are supposed to be on this side. So I think there are two, and uh, what you do is that uh, immediately I leave this place, I will request um, our principal to come and issue those two certificates. You can take your seat. And then, after that, we shall have uh, a vote of thanks from uh, our sister Eunice. After the vote of thanks, uh, Elder Were will guide us in uh, how to, we can take photos. This will be group photos. After the group photos, then uh, we shall have, um, um, we can have one here and one outside, but the elder will guide us. Then after that, we shall have a tree planting session. We were told by um, our, uh, our pastor, deputy senior pastor, that we should be good stewards. And one of the things that we would want to do is that in terms of stewardship to the environment, and as a mark of this class, we have two trees which we want to plant at the back of the church, and uh, so that then we can and make sure that uh, you keep looking at that tree. Let it not die. So we won't be to come here after a number of years to come and see it is there. Ikikufa mujue mkuje, uwe utaona imekufa uwe ukuje utafuta igine ukuje replace. It ma the trees must be there 10 years. Do we agree? Okay, so 10 years down the line, then let's come back and say that uh, the trees are there. I shall follow up to make sure that it is labeled with its scientific name and uh, that's, that's my business. It will be labeled with a scientific name and the uh, date and the class and, and uh, that planted that those, two, those two trees. We shall have two. Then uh, I shall read in that. And then when we are planting the trees, after we finish, we shall request our, Esther, uh, our sister Esther to come and pray for us and guide us on how to go for refreshment and take lunch. Is that agreeable? So thank you so much for help uh, uh, allowing me to be part of the people who have been studying here and also facilitating the class for today. And with this, I want to invite uh, our elder and principal. Welcome.
Thank you very much. Uh, do we have all the certificates back here? How many are still holding their certificates? They love the certificates so much that they don't want to part with the certificate. They have a, what we call emotional attachment <laughs> to the certificates. They are very beautiful. I know that. Yeah, but let's have them back uh, so that our pastors can sign them. We'll have um, uh, our senior pastor and uh, Rev. Murichu signing them, so we'll take them back. But there are people who came late, and uh, they have the chance to come. Let's graduate them also as well, and I will ask uh, them to come. I will start by asking for uh, Jane Frieda, please come. Please come. And you're not clamping anymore. Are you tired? <laughs> Jane Frieda. And uh, I will ask uh, Rev. Murishu, uh, please, you can issue the certificate, Asante. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Dorica, can we graduated also by the pastor? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can give us the certificate back, please. Don't go with it. <laughs> can I have it back? <laughs> let's, let's have them signed for, for us, isn't it? We need to have them signed and sealed, isn't it? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Pasi. Thank you for, for that, for helping us with that. Uh, so uh, tomorrow we're going to be unveiled here, and I've spoken to Pasi, and we've agreed just have five minutes or thereabout uh, that will be unveiled here. And there's a suggestion that we change our clothing today to African. Are you in agreement? Are you in agreement? How many agree that we can do African? For men, you can do just a top African and then with a the trouser, and the ladies know what to do. Can we do that? Okay, so then we can do that. All right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm just uh, being reminded here that the seats that you are in, they will be reserved for you. So you'll come and sit in the same place. I hope that that will be possible. I believe that uh, Miriam, you'll organize that. Eh? So we've agreed, you'll be in the two services, African wear, and we'll also sing. Not a joke noise, eh? But I think that the, the song was very well done, eh? I think there are some good leaders around, eh? We'll do it well, eh? Yeah, so thank you very much. I want now to call uh, Eunice to come. Sorry? I can't hear you. Both services. Both services, first and second. There's a reason why we need to do that, yeah. Yeah. So let's, just before that, uh, let's appreciate our speaker for the day who has come, who has given us a charge, very powerful, Professor Tim Mwangi. And I want to call on Miriam. Miriam, could you just please come and help us to issue? to issue the, uh, the gift to him. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Timothy Mwangi. We are really honored to have, to have you and for you gracing this occasion. And uh, we have something small, I request uh, my sister Esther Mongela. You need to go and replenish, you refresh yourself with this basket of fresh fruits. The camera, please. As we go and lay our lives down, in the ministry or the pig ministry. <laughs> Friends, you need to call yourself for a small meeting uh -huh. and reflect and plan and strategize how you'll do the pig ministry. Thank you so much, Professor. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Makofi Kwa Professor, once again for coming. Uh, now I want to call uh, our sister Eunice to come and give us the vote of thanks. And thereafter, then we proceed as we've already been guided. Eh? Thank you. Say hello to your classmates. You are about to say goodbye to them. <laughs> yes, I have a list of vote of thanks. And this list is quite long, but it starts with God first. Do we agree? I tell you, we began last year. And I'm saying this because of the guests. Last year, 2023, the month of, uh, was it March? Yes. And I remember I had to commit, and I was a traveling worker 
in this country. I know most of you also had to commit that you'll be here every second Saturday. Prof, you can hear. Yes, so we want to thank God. How do we do it? Everybody, let's just stand up and tell Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do it in a prayer mode. Thank you, Father. We don't take it for granted. We know that you have taken us through. If it were not you, we don't know what we would have done. We just say thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We give all the gratitude to you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's the best we could do, and we can do more. We can have a seat. So the next people we are going to uh, give our thanks is the church leadership. Do we agree they have supported us? Yes. All the permits, all their presence, majority of them took turns from the senior to the deputy here, and all the pastors, the elders, it's not easy for them to be here and also support throughout, but they did it most of the time. We can give them a clap, two claps. Thank you. So we also have our guest of honor today. He managed to grace us, but sometimes you don't know why he was selected. It's God who did it. For me, because I've made some decision. Prof, I'm coming to teach there. Yes. So, you see, we want to thank our prof for mentoring us. Did you hear his uh, testimony? He's just picked. He doesn't have to tell people to pick him. How I pray that that is our testimony for all of us with ethics and integrity. Yeah. So, let's clap. Let's give him two hot ones. Thank you. Yes. I think I need a brother to coordinate the, the, the clubs. Now, <laughs> yeah, we have now the secretariat. Maybe you can stand. And I'll tell you something about the secretariat. Planning, and I'm one of them. Huh? Let's clap for them, yeah. The planning, the timing, the timing, the giving, everything. That team has been doing 24-hour planning and giving in, most of the time also praying. Did you realize if you want to succeed, you have to pray, respect others, and us who are serving am among them and we are not elders, we have learned a lot. I have learned a lot from that team. They are leaders. You have true leaders in this sanctuary. So we want to thank God for them. Let us appreciate also yourself the graduates. Now, this one we shall do in, in a better way. Let's stand up and give ourselves three hearty kilo claps. <laughs> Were it not for you? It means a lot. Uh, since last year, I kept reminding most of us I was the, communica the communication officer in charge. But we did not belabor a lot. Prof, they are very obedient. And uh, we have leaders. Other branches will also benefit. So let us give ourselves three kilo claps. So in, a, in an organized way. So I'll say one, you clap the first one, two, three, like that. So one. Is it like that, really? OK, I will say it like, let's, let's join like this. One, two, three, we clap. One, two, three. 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 Okay. I think we'll practice for tomorrow. Yeah. So, don't doubt yourself. You made it. Tell your neighbor you, you made it. Look at your classmates. Now you are leaders together. We'll be finding you in some universities, some, some ministries internally. We will be relying on you to give leadership. Sometimes we look at the next person. Is it me or is it them? It's you who is being called upon. Are we to together? Then we have also the guests. Today we brought our guests. We brought children. We brought our husbands, our wives. Yes? How do you want us to give a vote of thanks to them? We want to say thank you. Let's give them one hot clap. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. So with that... Then we are going to clap. We have also the media team. 
There are people who work behind the scenes and you don't know. The kitchen people, you've been taking quality meals, quality drinks. Do we agree? We have been have, finding a clean sanctuary, the sweepers, the toilets. Let's appreciate them. One hot one. Yes, thank you very much. So guests are still coming, and I believe the next, uh, the next step, uh, step will be to go for that lunch, but we shall be told how we shall be organized. Thank you for being there for the ministry. Thank you. Now you have graduated. May God bless you. May God bless the leadership. Are we going to stop here? No. Do we promise to continue and serve? Yes. Remember, we have been charged. We are just beginning. We have been sharpened. We shall be meeting in other classes. Personally, I'm not stopping. I will continue to read and to sharpen my skills and to serve God. Tell your neighbor, I will continue. I will continue. May the Lord bless you. May Numbers chapter 6, verse 2 to 24 to 27 be upon you. May his face shine upon you. Thank you very much. Principal. Thank you, Eunice. Buona Sifiwe. Uh, Prof, I have a passion for children ministry. And I've just seen the diploma in children ministry. And I promise I'll be your first student. <laughs> I'm told of a graduate who stood in front of students when they were graduating and he started his speech by saying, I would like to thank the internet, Google, Wikipedia, Microsoft Word, and whoever invented copy and paste. <laughs> I hope we are not part of that. <laughs> now, uh, I'll request the secretariat to come. They'll be the first people to take a photo here, together with our guest. So kindly, the members of the secretariat, please. Yes, here. Yes. First and... Uh, Kofi, yeah? Because of our numbers, I think it will be easier for us to, to have the photo here, just the way we were, we were standing while we were singing. So I request all of us to come here so that uh, we take the photo. Because outside there is going to be a challenge. Yeah. So, so please, yes, Tafadali, let's move to the... After that, you'll be, as you're having our lunch, you are free to, to have a photo with your family members and your friends. But for now, it's just for the, the people graduating. 